everybody, welcome to Hot Couch Potato, the podcast where we talk about video games and play 2D Minecraft. My name Yay. is Brent, aka Boo Up. I'm here with my man Rick, aka A New Perfect Day. What's going on, man? Hey, today is a great, cold, cloudy day. Oh, it's not even cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> just take cold. that back. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a cold day, <laughs> but uh, not much going on. Just playing a lot of video games, and uh, you know, we just got done with Thanksgiving. So yeah, I'm so sad that it went by so fast. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've been starving for a while, and <laughs> Wait, you didn't take up leftovers, dude. Dude, leftovers were gone. No way. Yeah, I was sad. Like so, basically, uh, when Thanksgiving rolled around. Uh, I ate so much, everything. Like, um, I think I ate three giant plates, mm-hmm. basically, in like less than two or three hours. And I was like, okay, you normally we always have leftovers, but I woke up the next day and I was like, yes, leftovers. Mm-hmm. Dude, the fridge was empty, and I was like, where's the leftovers? And apparently, everybody ate so much on Thanksgiving that literally there's no more leftovers and i was like there's only rice and i was like oh my god <laughs> oh, no, <dude. laughs> john raymond i need your ribs man <laughs> so yeah That's how was crazy. your thanksgiving uh, it was good man it was good a little bit more low-key this year uh just spent it with some cousins um nice. and then we had this text thread you know, the week leading up to Thanksgiving about what everybody should bring and what they're bringing so we don't bring doubles or whatever. Um, Uh So it pops out, oh, we got the turkey. Oh, we got the ham. Oh, we got the, what else did people bring? Oh, we got lasagna, um, meatloaf, potatoes, Brussels sprouts, mac and cheese, all this stuff, right? And I get Uh these texts super late. And I look at it and I go, well, what the hell am I supposed to bring? <laughs> I have no idea at this point. And I was like, maybe I could bring a cake or some dessert or something. Like, oh, no, we're celebrating um, Arabelle's birthday. We already have cake and dessert and stuff. So I was Damn. like, all right, um, I guess I'll bring drinks. And they're like, yeah, go ahead and bring beer and wine. I was like, say oh, no wow. more. <laughs> and it was I'm crazy. the guy. <laughs> yeah, it, it was crazy. It was in my cousin's, um, this is a condo in Otai. And when I got there, you know, I put all my drinks in the fridge and stuff like that. And I looked and there was no food out on the table. I was like, oh, where's all the food? And they go, oh, it's in the oven. Bro, they have, wow! the, smallest, they have the smallest oven I've ever seen, right? Well, uh-huh. smaller than usual because it's in a condo and it's a pretty small place. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I don't really ask any more questions. Then it's time to eat. So they start bringing out the food. So they open the oven. Here comes two things of meatloaf. Here comes half a turkey. Here comes Damn. ham. Here comes, I was like, how the fuck did you guys fit all this shit in there? <laughs> it must have been like Tetris wow. in that bitch. <laughs> yeah, holy crap. <laughs> no, but it was amazing. Um, I think I ate every 30 minutes. I would get a plate, dude. And just <laughs> sit down and sleep. Then wake up again and get another plate. Definitely did not take home leftovers like an idiot. Because <laughs> I, th- I was thinking to myself, I'm so full. There's no way I can ever be hungry ever again in my life, right? Yeah. Of course, I wake up on Friday, and I'm looking for something to eat. <laughs> like, fuck! I should have taken something home. And there was a shit ton of leftovers too, so I'm pissed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good times, man. Yeah. Um, today is our 26th episode. Woo! Of the Hot Couch Potato Podcast, man. This is wild. That means we've been doing this for six months, man. Straight? Straight, Straight. dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we've taken any breaks. It's kind of gnarly, dude. But That's good. <laughs> it's been good times, man. It's been a learning experience, you know. Whatever little research we do in each of these topics, we do some. So I'm learning a little bit more about the gaming industry as time goes on. Um, That and I feel like my ability to bullshit and make stuff up on the line is getting better (laughs) (laughs) i think since we've started the podcast i've had four job interviews and wow three out of the four of them i got the only thing is i fucking have been turning them down because i don't really want to work at these places (laughs) (laughs) do you ever get those men i mean you've been Uh, on a job hunt recently where you just apply to anything right because you just want to make some money 
then they finally call you back after you have a job and you go, yeah, I don't really need this, but it'd be cool to get the experience in the interview, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normally, uh, yeah, for the past three three months or four months or whatever, but uh, I've been applying to like jobs and then I applied to like anything. So that's what I was saying. Like I got hired for Best Buy, but the thing is, I was like, I wish I could have just turned it down. But I was like, I need money. and <laughs> But then it, it was just a little awkward when, you know, I went, I didn't even start orientation and everybody was so excited. They're like, oh, yeah, you're going to do best. You're going to do great in sales. You know, like they didn't mm -hmm. tell anybody else anything, like encourage them. <laughs> they were just telling me, they're like, yeah, we look forward to you making a lot of sales and everything and blah, blah, blah. And then that was like when I got hit up by the other job saying, yeah, you're hired. And I was like, oh, shoot, how do I tell Best Buy now and let them down? <laughs> <laughs> Gently. <laughs> so I just like gave them a quick call. I'm like, yeah, I, I got another job. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> that is funny, dude. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's definitely been a learning, a growing process. You know, editing these things together too, and putting it all up. It's been good times, man. Plus, I get to talk to my best friend every week, dude. Yeah, best bros. Even though we, you should be up. a video editor too. If you're thinking, maybe a gaming video editor. Maybe I'd actually have to do that first. Speaking of, <laughs> that's what we're talking about the six months we've been doing this. We're going to bring back Hot Couch Potato Plays. Um, yeah. I think the last one that came out was Galgun. There's actually a lot more Galgun that we need to put out there. Um, oh, yeah. Like, I really want to continue that story. <laughs> dude, I didn't even finish editing. Okay. All I'm going to say is The Window. You remember that part? The window? Yeah. Uh, don't remember. I okay. remember we were left off in the cafeteria. <laughs> oh! Okay, yeah, I remember. <laughs> I still have to edit that part, and I don't think I'm ready for it, dude. <laughs> but it'll be coming soon. Um, I'll try to have it out by, like, Wednesday or something, but... Nice. We yeah. We should yeah. Uh, like dive in a little bit of every game too. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean we still have I have Bloodborne footage of us. I have Left 4 Dead 2 footage with Dustin. <laughs> oh so there's, no there's a child lot. left behind, but we leave <laughs> each other behind. <laughs> so there's a lot to put on there. Um I just need to get around to editing it. So here's uh twenty six more weeks, man, of, of good times, man. You mean 50 years. We're still waiting for Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> we won't oh, stop till we got Final Fantasy. <laughs> that's true. That's, that might be the only one. Because then we'll just be so immersed in that game, we won't be doing anything else, man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's just going to be nothing but uh, episodes of just Final Fantasy over and over and over. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Dude, we thought we were going to do that with Destiny. Look how that game has died out, man. That shit is so crazy. So, I don't I know. It, was, it came in huge, but it just left so fast. Yeah, man. They've been doing um, weekly reveals or weekly streams, just updating people on what's going to happen in the next um, expansion for Destiny. Yeah. Um, and the feedback has gotten so bad that the creative director for Destiny 2, um, I think his name is Luke Smith. He put out a tweet saying, yeah, this week we're just going to address all the concerns about our game. <laughs> they, were supposed to talk about, they were supposed to talk about design, about the new levels and shit like that. But he goes, nah, we'll finally answer your guys' questions because we see our game is dying, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good, man. We've seen, I guess, in two consecutive weeks, customer feedback is finally getting to the developers, right? With um, Battlefront 2. And now Destiny 2. People are complaining so much that they actually have to address it. You know what I mean? They don't have to sit yeah. in the ivory tower anymore and be like, well, you know, you guys can complain all you want. I made all my money. Now they actually have to appease the customer base. So, Yeah, that goes. reminds me of that one interview with Bungie. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember that guy, but he was like saying, oh, yeah, you're going to buy the DLC. You know, like he was kind of condescending and it was like cocky and and all that but i remember like a lot of fans were like ticked off with this like yeah we are gonna buy your your dlc but you know you shouldn't be putting it like that kind of thing like, yeah you're that just was... gonna buy our dlc <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was luke smith man 
Oh, uh, okay. One where you said you're gonna throw money at the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a great meme, but if you say it like an asshole, you're still an asshole, dude. <laughs> <laughs> People are still gonna be upset at it. So that's kind of crazy, man. Um, so Thanksgiving was good. Of course, after that is Black Friday. Which means hella yeah. Black Friday deals, man. How'd you do? What was your haul this year? Um, this year I was like trying to hold off because I know I like to spend. So, um, Black Friday I don't like to camp basically, <laughs> um, but I like to <laughs> just look at the deals and things. And I was like, okay, yeah, I got everything. So I was like kind of keeping it in the back of my mind, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna buy nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, but oh my god, like so when I was heading back up from San Diego, I was like, we had to stop by uh, the Carlsbad Mall, and. Oh my God! There's so many deals, like fifty percent off to eighty percent off. I was like, "Oh shoot! I can buy new shoes. I can buy some Puma shoes." And I was like, "Dude!" So we ended up going to the Bose uh, area, and I was like, "Shit! I know I'm gonna end up buying something. If something is fifty dollars or, or around that, I might buy something." Uh -huh. And it turns out I bought computer speakers. I was like, <laughs> "Damn it! I gave in." <laughs> <laughs> but these you know these speakers are usually a hundred dollars but i finally got nice speakers for my computer because nice. i'm still rocking um some very ten dollar speakers you know because mm -hmm. i play with my headphones you so, said yeah. yeah like but now i guess i can watch things you know what i'm saying like <laughs> with surround sound the immersion <laughs> the speakers <laughs> blasting dude <laughs> don't you live in an apartment <laughs> complex yeah, <laughs> so I had to adjust it to the volume five. Twenty <laughs> percent volume. <laughs> watching from halfway across the room in the kitchen and shit, just watching it. <laughs> I never break immersion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, dude. So you actually went out to the stores physically. Were there a lot of people out there or what? Uh, didn't look like it, but the parking lot was filled. Um, but when we got in, uh, we we're starting to see there's like lots of people in different stores. And the ones that were like mainly marked up to like 80% off, those were the ones that were like generally populated. Mm -hmm. But we were like speaking to this guy at the Bose and we're like, he was like saying, yeah, I've been working 12-hour shifts every day, and it's going to be like that for the next two days. I'm like, jeez, you know. But, yeah, it, it was not that bad. Yeah. We were, I think we hit it like right after things were starting to close down. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think – so my experience working Black Friday, I worked at Fry's during a Black Friday, which was the most horrible experience Shit. of my life. I think I was scheduled to come in at 6 or something like that, right? Uh -huh. They emailed me or called me the day before and said, "Yeah, can you come in at 3? And I was like, "No, three in the morning? Get the <laughs> fuck out of here, dude!" <laughs> and I did. I went in at three in the morning, and I think I worked until ten. They let me go home from ten to three, and then I had to work from three all the way to closing, which was at like eleven, dude. So I Holy legit crap. worked twelve hours that day. Yeah, it was horrible, man. Jeez, but it, and, yeah. See, I thought that like Amazon would be like. Yeah, you have to work today. So I was thinking about saving my day off to take time off for Thanksgiving. But it turns out, like, they're like, oh, yeah, we have too many people working. Um, you can volunteer off. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to use my hours. <laughs> yeah, but your, your time is coming up because Amazon, they do the Cyber Monday instead of Black Friday, right? You yeah, know, I mean, throwing ooh. boxes behind your head. And yeah, the and shit. <laughs> I'm gonna gonna disappearing in the background, pretending like I'm working. I'm just gonna be moving. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, here's a trick that my cousin and I do, right? Because we work in offices. So uh -huh. if you want to act busy and don't want to do anything, all you have to do is carry like a red folder and walk around really quickly with it. So people will see what like, oh man, that must be important. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so just get that folder and if you don't want to do anything, just walk by. I'd use that shit to go to like, I don't know, Starbucks. I'll just walk out the door with the red folder. <laughs> go to Starbucks and come back. Oh man, that that guy looks busy. <laughs> I know, dude. <laughs> must be important. He has a cup of coffee. <laughs> Uh, so for me, I bought a new monitor, 
actually. Nice. Asus 144 hertz monitor. Um, yeah. Upgrade my main one that I got here. Uh, I just did it online, man. I bought it at Best Buy and did in store pickup. Um, I was planning on going on Friday night to pick it up. Today is Sunday and I still haven't picked it up. <laughs> 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 but I think Best Buy system is great. You know, you can order it online and get it for in store pickup and they won't charge you until you actually pick it up from Best Buy. So I think that's cool. And they'll hold it for me until I think they hold it for a week is what it is. So I can have until next Friday to pick it up. If I don't, then they'll just restock it. Um, nice. The only thing is the service when you get there kind of sucks, right? As oh, Dustin, as Dustin experienced, because he picked up the same monitor and he went on Friday and he said he was waiting for an hour for them to get it. <laughs> Holy crap. And he said the worst thing is, is this monitor was pretty popular. So they had a whole stack of this monitor behind the in-store pickup place, right? So you yeah. would think Dustin shows his email, they would just pick one up and give it to him, right? No, apparently each one of the monitors had a person's name on it. So they had to dig wow. through all the monitors and look for Dustin's name. What? Holy crap. I mean, why? Why would yeah. they do that? Maybe for warranty or recycling fees after associate the barcode with someone i have no idea i think maybe because um i rem we were talking to the guy at bose and then he was gonna like sell one of his last speakers but then it turns out like one his co-worker said he's like yeah we can't sell that because somebody's driving all the way down from irvine to come pick it up and Jesus. i was like oh maybe you know like maybe that's similar to like the best buy thing they they have to put a name on it because like there's people that drive from la to come pick it up or or stuff like that you know it's just but that monitor is amazing i've been i have that monitor it's i've been rocking it ever since and the price hasn't been going down for a while mm -hmm. so you know it's a really good monitor good gaming monitor i definitely recommend that monitor <laughs> <laughs> 144 hertz one million one millisecond um response time 1080p 24 inches so, um, you know, the ideal gaming, I think, sizes is, like, between 23 inches and 29 inches. Oh, okay. Something like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, it's a good monitor. When you calibrate it good, it's good. It's crystal clear. Everything is fast and great. And you said you need DisplayPort 1.4 for it? Yeah, the latest uh, DisplayPort um, to, to maximize your graphics card if... Uh, if anything, so you don't have to worry about any, I don't know, future bottlenecking. Mm -hmm. But I think there's like HDMI right now that's 2.0 and it does similar things. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I just have a display port, you know, just just because. No, for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, it's annoying, man. At my job, I do IT. Uh -huh. So I plug in all the computers to TVs for presentations and stuff like that. Yeah. And the laptops we have only have display ports. And all the TVs we Whoa. have only have HDMI, dude. It's so stupid. Whoa. So we have what kind of laptops are you guys rocking? We then? have one adapter that transfers from HDMI to DisplayPort, and it's always missing, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I told them, I said, "You got to buy one, and I'm gonna put my name on it." <laughs> so everywhere I go, I know I have one. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of like the time when um, I remember at my previous job I was working with uh like like a conference room and so what happened was there the adapter from the display port to the hdmi was not working but they called me and my coworker to come fix it mm -hmm. and it was a room full full of important people like all of the top people and i remember like i forget something was just wrong with just plugging it in uh -huh. and then instead of me taking the blame uh, my coworker took the blame and I like suddenly just like backed away out of the, the conference room. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm not going to get yelled at. <laughs> no way. They were legit yelling at him, dude. Well, no, the CEO was like saying, like kind of blaming him. He's like, oh, you messed it up. Oh, you know, it's your fault that, you know, ever since you came in here, you, you messed it up. You touched something. And I was like, damn, I'm just going to back slowly. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell a completely different – because I've had something like that too where it's just really important people from out of town coming and they call you because the um, computer screen isn't being mirrored onto, onto the, the TV. It's like an extension instead, you know, which of course all you have to do – I think on laptops it's um, 
think it control or function f10 or F-10. something like yeah, that yeah something like that something like that just super simple right and they're stressing about it and i go down there right and it is i just have to press two buttons to fix their issue but the fact that there's all these important people up there looking and waiting mm-hmm. on you makes it difficult i sweated a bead of sweat <laughs> went down my forehead i knew what to do i knew how to fix it and i did it was a simple two second fix but the sweat was already beating yeah i was like oh god if this doesn't work i'm gonna look like a dumbass up here <laughs> yeah. that is what i like why i backed out you know it's like <laughs> these guys are so high up it's like man i just have to plug it in a little and you know problem solved but i was yeah. like oh i can't handle the Ten stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that shit's too funny. So, damn, you might have talked me into getting that monitor, dude. I might pick it up today after this. Oh, man, I recommend it, man. It's going to match <laughs> your future 10, 1080 or 1060, 1070, shit. 1080 Ti. Yeah. Soon. If only there was a Black Friday deal on those. Yeah. I, definitely I think they're still holding Friday out Friday. on that, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're still hoarding on that shit. Shit. Um, how about your backlog, man? Do you get any games that were good deals? Uh, yeah, I got a uh, Persona Five. I totally forgot. Thanks for reminding me. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, right now, I have Persona Five for thirty bucks. Nice. Um, I don't know if the deal is still going on, but right now, my cousin and my nephew made a bet of saying, like, who would I choose? <laughs> who would you choose for <laughs> when what? it comes for waifu? <laughs> persona oh yeah. shit so they're like betting against me and they're like okay i have three picks and then they're like just getting heat in a heated discussion i'm like no he would pick him these people because i know rick very well and i was like what what is going what on <laughs> and then i was like okay let me get in and on this i bet you 10 bucks that you're not going to pick the right people whoa dude <laughs> put money on the table yeah i was like i'm gonna surprise y'all <laughs> and come out of left field <laughs> dude you can't fake it too you got to follow your heart when it comes to your waifus exactly you can't just, you can't just tell them because it's you want to win 10 bucks you know you got to go with your true heart feelings on this man you can't scam them yeah exactly that's what i said i was like i'm just gonna <laughs> go unbiased and i'm gonna do exactly what i feels right so you guys Shit. better be, i don't know you guys can have the 10 bucks whoever picks it right but yeah so needless to say rick's <laughs> backlog got a lot worse <laughs> he picked up an 80 hour game <laughs> oh speaking of that yeah exactly it's like 80 to 100 hour game speaking of that i was like oh yeah near is on sale oh and i was like oh let me pick that up and then it turns out i already bought it <laughs> you have near two already I didn't know when. I still don't. Till this day, I don't know when I picked it up or how it got into my library. But right now, yeah. Like, I never thought I would be picking that game up. <laughs> Apparently, I have it right, in my dude. library. The backlog is fully in the shit now. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine got worse as well. I bought a couple games. Well, two weeks ago, I bought Kingdom Hearts, the whole series. So I'm oh, fucked automatically, yeah. bro. You're done. That's going to take me 368 divided by two days to finish, man. (laughs) (laughs) But I picked up Dark Souls 3. Now, I played it already, but I just borrowed it from somebody. Um, But I got the complete Dark Souls 3 and all the DLC for $33, dude, off the PlayStation Store. So it was a super deal. Yeah. Huge deal, considering that the base game is $25, I think on sale so you just pay eight dollars more and you get hours more of um of gameplay out of it so i couldn't pass that up and finally 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 i picked up final fantasy 15 um oh nice is it for ps4 right yeah for ps4 so rick's been telling me all this stuff about it but there's this one thing in the end that he won't spoil for me because it just ruins the game for him um i'm finally gonna find out what that is plus the multiplayer <laughs> looks pretty decent so i'm gonna see if i can dive into that a little bit um, yeah as far as when i'm gonna start this game i have no idea never <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it's there and available to download on my playstation is is good enough for me man that means i'll eventually, eventually dude that's what i was thinking i was like we're just buying games 
and we're just buying it just to have it. So we're collecting <laughs> games that we're not even playing, but we're just collecting it just for that comfort of having it. <laughs> for real, man. For real. Um, and you totally reminded me about Cyber Monday. I totally forgot about oh, that until yeah. we were just talking about it right now. And after a quick two-minute Google search, I'm going to go bankrupt by Tuesday. <laughs> it sucks, dude. There's so much more shit going on for sale, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to block it out in my mind, but I keep getting the notifications. <laughs> just put your phone on sleep mode, dude. <laughs> See, I don't need to get notifications. I have to look it up myself. Weird thing, though, and we were just discussing this, is no deals on the Switch, surprisingly, huh? Yeah, well, I think it's because since it like released recently, mm-hmm. I think they just want to milk all of that money. Yeah. But if they yeah. just said, "Oh yeah, let's just do fifty dollars off," I think they would have like outsold everything. You know. I know. I mean, you're right though. It's still already selling off the rockers, man. Why? Why ruin that by taking some money off? You know. Exactly. Um, I know the deals are on the bundles. The bundles are usually three sixty, three seventy, and now you can buy them for. 320 or so so there is that 50 dollar deal on it but that's still over 300 bucks man that's crazy yeah yeah yeah. so i don't know nothing's really pushed me so far as to buy a new console yet i know there's been a bunch of ps4 pro deals um but my ps4 is still kicking i think i'm fine the only thing i might be on the lookout for is a new hard drive has to be a 2.5 inch and i think four terabytes up to four terabytes hmm I'm definitely just going to stick with maybe two because my PS4 is getting full, dude. It's kind of crazy. And you know what it is? <laughs> it's all the videos that I save. <laughs> oh, that's like playing together and all that? Yeah, yeah. And it's going to take me like five hours to transfer that onto a external and then put it on my computer. Damn, so dude. I last USB time had a hundred gigs of videos and it was what? all from Destiny 1. Holy shit. <laughs> Did you move yeah, it? I know. Well, I went through every single one. It took me, I think, like a couple days nonstop oh God, just dude. to go through all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think they only have USB 2.0 on the PlayStation 4s. So the yeah. transfer rate is super slow. And you can't slow. do anything else while you're transferring your files over. It's just stuck on the status screen. So just leave that on and grab a Coke and watch it go by. <laughs> <laughs> so enough about deals some stuff that got released for free this week um a mobile game which we were just talking about a couple weeks ago and how big they could be and are falling off of animal crossing pocket camp got released i think november 25th what's today 26 yeah. yesterday man and i've already gotten text message with people's friend codes and Wanting to play together and fish in each other's ponds, man. Do you think this is going to be the next Pokemon Go, dude? Uh, I don't make no. I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the <laughs> the fan base. Like, how big is it? Um, because I know Pokemon like it affected the world kind of thing. <laughs> but this, I know it's really popular. But yeah. um, yeah, my nephew was trying to get me into playing that game, and I was like. I don't know. I might. I might since, you know, to fill that void from the Pokemon Go, um, since I recently deleted it after I heard (gasps) the shocking news of Pikachu talking. (laughs) (laughs) So horrible, man. Oh, my God. I was so traumatized. I was like, man, first you get rid of Misty and Brock, and then you make your Pikachu talk. Uh, yeah man i mean what do you i think this originally came out on the gamecube um and a lot of people thought it was going to come out on the switch only to I think be disappointed it's on 3ds too yeah yeah so a lot of people thought a switch version was coming out it turns out it wasn't real it was just going to be this mobile version for a while um maybe it's a great move by nintendo maybe they're just testing the waters and seeing how receptive people are what the fan base is like um, cause you best believe there are microtransactions in this game. You know, I think usually you farm fish and harvest stuff so you can make furniture in your house and everything like that. Um, so in Pokemon or Pokemon go. So in this game, you can actually go to other people and play with other people and farm and all that. Yeah. Because they might have different kinds of trees, different kinds of fish in their world. So then you can go f- visit them and, um, try to get that material to bring it back to your world. Um, 
And yeah, unlike Pokemon Go, you don't really have to travel anywhere. You can just play this game from your house. Um, and yeah, the microtransactions are spent on, I don't know, a special chair, a special kind of wallpaper. Wow. Things like that. And of course, <laughs> you know, people are going to buy it. So it'll be interesting to see what the numbers are like so far and how much money they're making on this game. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's going to have a pretty good fan base, dude, especially after uh, the neighbor got pulled up in Smash Bros. That widened the audience for sure. So we'll see how it goes, man. I haven't downloaded it yet, but. You download it tomorrow. Maybe. We'll see, dude. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think we're getting enough of building our own stuff in another game, which yeah! we'll go over shortly. <laughs> um, but the countdown to PSX. It's still on. Yeah, oh, so far on. away, and it's so, so close. <laughs> <laughs> We're down to eleven days, dude. Eleven days. It's next weekend, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after that is PSX. Oh, man. Man. Two full work weekends. I know. <laughs> I know. Man. I'm super. I'm excited, man. I I can't wait. Um, today I want to talk about the platinum trophy, man, and the cards that we were able to collect from PSX, man. Um, yeah we all got the platinum right we all eventually got the platinum i think most of us some of them some of us like just was kind of tired at the end because Mm -hmm. it's like gives you a lot of stuff to do so um but yeah i think most of us collected the card Mm -hmm. so what these trophies were well trophies on playstation in general are basically achievements from xbox whenever you do something in a game you get a trophy for it let's say you I don't know, die for the first time in Dark Souls. They give you a trophy, you know, one of many or something like that, just to taunt you or whatever. Or <laughs> if you reach the highest level without dying, you get a trophy or something like that. It's just little achievements to show people, you know, how good you are at a game or whatever. Um, they implemented these into PlayStation Experience by giving you cards and having an app on your phone where you have to scan in everywhere um, to track your progress on what you were doing. So I think for the Platinum Trophy, you had to play... 30 demos um go to an autograph signing watch the capcom cup go to a press conference um i don't know what else there was buy something from the playstation store there was just all these things you had to do you know what i mean and once you got that you got a platinum trophy card and i think you got 20 percent off the playstation store and like ten dollar gift card and you get a free I think prize at the end or something like that. Yeah, yeah, because with every trophy you got, because you worked your way up, right? I think bronze trophy was playing five demos, silver was playing ten, um, gold was playing twenty, and then of course the platinum game after that. Um, you got a freebie for everything you did. Some places you scanned your app onto, and you got a free game, right? Didn't a lot of people get Pyre that year? I know I got some weird fishing game that I still haven't installed <laughs> and a baseball <laughs> game. I got a bunch of like random free games from PSX. Um, but it's good, man. It gives you an incentive to be active and not just walk around, but actually try things that you wouldn't normally try out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then especially like all of the free stuff gives you the stuff that makes you try out stuff. So like basically I got person of five. So, you, you know, you get a person of five theme and, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even though I haven't played any of the person in games, I like just played a bit and I was like, wow, I got exposed. So I guess that's a good incentive to play stuff, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, this was me. I think I was at the height of playing Bloodborne during last year's PSX. And... Or oh, Dark Souls you were playing Neo, right? <laughs> I, no, no, no. Neo wasn't out yet. Neo came out in February of this year. Oh, yeah, but I did play it at there. You yeah, the yeah, demo. That's true. Yeah, you're playing the frog boss. That's true. But that's the thing. I dropped like 40 hours into the demos that you played at home. So I think I finished the demo stage at PSX. <laughs> <laughs> I remember almost yeah, died yeah. a couple of times too. To some you're one images. of the few to actually complete it. And yeah, I remember guy, everybody I remember, was like, you. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the guy came up after. He's like, dude. You're you're like the second person to beat it today. I was like, oh, cool, thanks, man. I just walked away. I remember I tried to act cool too when I first came up. I was like, how do you play this game? <laughs> See, you're a bloodborne expert. <laughs> yeah, dude, but yeah, I think that was at the height of me playing Dark Souls three. So then I um tried out Salt and Sanctuary over there too, which is like a two D 
Dark Souls game. Um, and I would have never have tried that usually. I mean, their booth was kind of low key and Salt and Sanctuary in that old Victorian font is kind of off putting. But once I, but I needed that one more game to get that platinum trophy, right? So I yeah. tried out the game and it turned out to be good. I bought it for like five bucks. So I haven't played that either. My fucking backlog <laughs> is so horrible, dude. <laughs> no, but yeah, it was good. It was good for you to, to get involved more into the PlayStation experience. I know afterwards going to E3 and not really having those incentives, you know, we really just walked around and, and, and looked at stuff and didn't really play as much games as we did at PSX. So hopefully they bring yeah. us back, man. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like PS or the e3 we we're just walking around and you know even though there's so many games i wanted to play it's just i didn't really wanted to wait in line to play all these games but you know psx is like oh yeah here's my favorite game mm-hmm. what you get a free shirt mm-hmm. so i was like okay i gotta play this game so i don't know the census program it's pretty good so you know free ten dollars off of your store so, you know, like, you can't go wrong with that. Plus, mm-hmm. you get 20% off from the gear store mm-hmm. online, though. Uh, and then they have, like, the exclusive gear store uh, uh, stuff that they're selling there, which people lined up so crazy, like, all over the I convention. That was the longest line. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, merch. like, Comic-Con line. I was like, whoa, what is going on? And then the line gets capped and, and all that, but... You know, the next day, fortunately, we were like, okay, let's just go there early, go straight to the store. And then even though we went there like at 6 in the morning, uh, we were pretty close. We ended up like the 100th person in line. I was yeah. Like, Golly. We these. still had to wait almost an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this year, I, I think my first thing is just hitting the store first, getting all the exclusive stuff that you can get, and mm-hmm. taking my time playing all of the games. Yeah, so, that's yeah. for sure, man. I. I think my favorite part of getting that platinum trophy um, was going to an autograph signing. And I don't know, we weren't really as big of fans as other people were of some game creators and game developers. I know we really wanted to see Hideo Kojima, who was there. I remember I yeah. brought my Metal Gear Solid CD case so he could sign it and stuff. And the line was ridiculous for that i don't think they figured that out at all i think we were just walking in and once they realized holy shit we need to make a line for this they started to make a line um but who did we ultimately get a signature from to fulfill that dude i oh yoshin yoshinori ono for a street fighter ah uh, okay he was like and, the designer for a street fighter 2 right yeah something like that and king of fighters and i remember like we were just getting in line but you know, like since we don't play a lot of fighting games, I remember we were kind of looking them, looking it up. We're like, who, who is this guy? Who are we getting your signature? Because <laughs> we didn't want to be weird when we went up there. Like, hi, how's it going? Can you sign this? And then all I really want is my card to get scanned, so <laughs> it can say I got a signature from somebody. So yeah, I, I got my we... uh, play, favorite PlayStation hat signed by him. You mm-hmm. know, because I was like, oh yeah, thanks, thanks for your hard work. That's all I said. Thanks for your hard work. <laughs> Dude, I think I told him I like his game better than Tekken or something, you know, or I said his <laughs> games are better than others. And then he actually responded to me and was like, oh, well, you know, each of them has their own flavor, their own style. So maybe you can enjoy both. And then he was, I was like, all right, thanks. And I just left. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have anything for him to sign. I think they give you a card and that's what he signed. But. Yeah, man. Damn. Good times. That's my favorite part. Because <laughs> the other ones were pretty easy. I mean, you played games and then you, the Capcom Cup, you didn't really have to sit there and watch it. You just had to get your thing scanned by somebody. Um, and then a presentation. Yeah, that one filled out fast. Like, it did. It was pretty crowded. Yeah, I know we showed up early for the press conference. Um, and, of course, that place filled up pretty quickly. Um, but the Capcom Cup was like at nighttime. And I remember we were going to go try and check it out, and it was filled up already, too, like an hour yeah. or two before it started. So it's crazy. Hopefully they have something good this year for, for trophies and incentives, man, because if not, I'll just probably be walking around a little bit <laughs> and being super selective <laughs> on what I want to play, you know, because we played a lot of random indie games, I think, too. What was that one that Anthony almost beat? All in Legion. Mm, mm-hmm. I remember, yeah, and he really I, almost beat that. 
Yeah, I remember, like, the guy was, like, boasting. He's like, yeah, no one ever beat our game. I've developed this. <laughs> I can tweak it. And no one has beat it. And then I remember Anthony, like, got really far to almost beating it. And the guy was kind of sweating. <laughs> no, man. It was so funny. But, yeah, uh, Anthony's pretty good at those kind of games. Yeah. And quickly learning. But, yeah, that game was pretty sick. It was, uh... But medieval times, and it was a kind of like an anime RPG, mm -hmm. side scrolling, but it's like a turn based kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it was, it kind of, if I would have to say, it was more like similar to like Muramasa and Odin Sphere, that kind of art style. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. That was super funny. And I remember they were giving it out for free on Reddit or something like that. And Anthony was like, hey, guys, comment on this so we can get the game for free. <laughs> yeah feels bad hopefully he gets it or hopefully he got it um but yeah 11 days dude it's coming quick i can't yeah wait, it's gonna come quick and leave quick so stop dude it's not even here yet don't even talk about it leaving I can't wait for that i'm ready time. prepared for it my backpack is ready to go right now <laughs> rick's already at christmas i guess at this point man <laughs> so enough about games that will potentially be playing what have we been playing this week, man? I'm going to say we because every game I think we've played this week has been multiplayer, right? Yeah, so I didn't we mention this? We were playing Left 4 Dead, and I think that was one of my recommendations a while back. But mm -hmm. um, we were playing Left 4 Dead with uh, me, you, and Destin. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I don't know, like I like those times when we're just messing around, um, lighting people on fire even though they have full <laughs> health. <laughs> <laughs> and we have one health. Did we mention that in the previous podcast where, um, you know, me and you were like, we only had literally one health. Like, all we had to oh, do no. is like get spit on by uh -huh. a, a zombie and we'd have died and like ended up the level. And we were like right before the next checkpoint, like literally just around the corner. But we uh -huh. were swarmed by zombies and, and all that. And then Dustin had full health. And all of a sudden, all, all I saw from the corner of my screen was, like, all the zombies was swarming him. Because I think he got biled on or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. And then I, like, I picked up the, I don't know, I panicked. So I picked up the gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is with me and gasoline. But I picked it up through the gasoline toward the horde. And then, like, my hand, like, hesitated. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. And then <laughs> right when I threw it, Brent shot. The, the gasoline. No, I didn't, dude. <laughs> I waited. I waited because I told Dustin not to shoot it. I said, Dustin, don't shoot at your feet. There's a gas can there. And I was trying to protect Dustin, man. I only had my pistols left. I was trying to shoot these. <laughs> but of course, they weren't going down. So I made the executive decision after trying to test it out and shot the gas tank and lit Dustin on fire. <laughs> and I remember Dustin was like looking at us while he was burning. <laughs> A full health of life. <laughs> then he went down. <laughs> oh, my, oh my god. god, dude! No, but we played. Which campaigns did we play? We played a couple. Uh, the airport and what was the other one? I think the one with Dustin was the hospital. The one where he went down. Yeah, that was uh, No Mercy. But we played No Mercy. Dead Air. We played a couple campaigns on Advanced. We've been, you know, getting a little cocky. And we played Dead Air. <laughs> and <laughs> there was this one part where we actually have to go through the airport and go outside the back. Oh, no, it wasn't even oh. that. Getting to the airport. Remember when we were all at Red Health, then a tank came through? Yeah. And we had to go to the parking right. garage? Oh, my yeah. God, dude. I think oh, my. And we were, like, limping up the parking yeah, garage. Dude. I remember I found friggin' um, – an adrenaline shot and I just ran for it dude I think that's how we made it I was the only one to make it and that's how we made it and the thing is too I think we ran a circle around this damn parking garage like twice right Didn't we yeah, yeah. Twice <laughs> we ran it twice enough for Dustin to catch up to us mm -hmm. with the tank we, by the way the tank yep. was chasing him the whole time <laughs> <laughs> it's just so troll man when you see the tank you're like all right dude everybody get ready i'm gonna throw this molotov and he hits a car towards you and knocks you down you know, <laughs> okay, game thanks your whole plan just goes out the window <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i think the most clutch one was um 
in the airport when two of us died and you had to run through and get us out of the closet. (laughs) (laughs) And then when we got out of the closet, a horde came and I think all of us died except for Dustin. I remember I went to the ground. I was like, Dustin, don't pick me up. Just go. And all the zombies were on me. And he fucking made it. And we yeah. failed that part like four or five times, right? Yeah. And it takes like 30, I don't know, like 30 minutes on average to just go through that whole scenario. I remember one time, like right when we was leaving the checkpoint. So I don't know why, but we just left the checkpoint. And I remember you saying something like, I hope we don't see a tank. And then next thing you know, there was a tank climbing the second floor. And we're like, oh, my God. So we, like, bolted back into the safe room. We're like, okay, this is the safe room. You can't do anything. You know, we could just shoot out the window. And then I went up to the second floor, like, trying to look down. And then all I see is, like, the, the door fly open. And we're like, whoa, the tank busted his way through. And we're all going to die. So we ended up dying right before we even left the safe room. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew it was that possible, but yeah, yeah. yeah. there's so many clutch times, um, yeah. you know, close calls and all that. Like, especially when, what was that one map with the car? We had to fill the gas tank for the car or something. Oh Lord, it. yeah. And we we spent like maybe three or four days on that, that particular map. We were just always failing because we put it on hard and I don't know, we just didn't want to put it back on normal. <laughs> <laughs> the only so, thing is the the checkpoint is so far, dude. From the it end. is, yeah. it is like the entire game. So you know, like when we get to the last part, we always die. But I remember we got to it was me and you left alive at the last second, and there's so many zombies. Um, we have low health, and then you went down, and then the tank was like coming toward me and the door was not opening for the truck and i was just standing there for like 10 <laughs> seconds <laughs> praying to jesus i was like please open this door please and then all i can hear is him running and he smacked me and i was down i was like damn it <laughs> yeah i forgot about i didn't know you had to kill the tank for those doors to open That's me kind of either cool. i was waiting that's why i was like on the thing i was on the car just yeah. like please open the door please open the <laughs> Oh, the Where other was one was the eye. boat. That's the other one we did. And I think we left you behind. That was Oh, no. Funniest. I was like the first one, one of the first people. I was like ahead of you guys. And then <laughs> what what hit me first? Oh, the A charger. charger. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like right near the safe, the, the end, right near it. And then all I had to do is get on the dock and then jump on the boat. And then I was like one of the first peoples. And it was like you and Dustin near me. But then you, I got hit by a charger, and then you guys went onto the boat, and you guys shot the charger, and then I got pulled by a liquor. Yeah, yeah. you got pulled by a all, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the way back to the to the entrance of the dock, and then you guys saved me again. And then right when I got up, a hunter jumped on top of me. <laughs> I was like every single special zombie hit me. <laughs> that was I wish I recorded that dude because we're running oh. to the boat and you the charger actually pushes you towards the boat but in the water. So yep, we kill the yep. charger and then you're just have to run. You just have to run to your right and then jump on the dock and jump on the boat. But no, a smoker pulls you all the way back all to the way shore. Back. <laughs> Then we save you again, and then a hunter jumps on you. And we just don't even shoot the hunter, I don't think. The screen just yeah. turns black. And it says, in memory of a new perfect day. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <sighs> shit, dude. Good times, man. Good times. And then the yeah. plain one. We beat that super easy. The ending for it. We oh, yeah. I all. thought it was going to be super intense, but, you know, like, that was actually kind of easy. Was that on normal? No, that was on advanced. Yeah, because the whole oh. time leading up to there, we were dying. <laughs> yeah, we were dying and shit then. <laughs> the actual last part. I think we just found a good camping spot and covered all our corners. So, yeah, man. Good times in Left 4 Dead too. <laughs> good times. We still got to finish that. Um, we've what also we been playing about? <laughs> Starbound, dude. Oh, yeah. Starbound. A game that came with the... Um, Humble Bundle Care Package that we were talking about last week. I didn't think too much of this game, but Rick has been poking and prodding about Terraria. And yeah. all the reviews I've read about Starbound compared it to Terraria. And I thought it'd be better so you could have your own 
you know, mothership and place. You just travel to different planets and mine the different planets. So I thought it'd be fun. So I installed it. Rick said he had it, so he installed it too. 40 hours later, we visited <laughs> not even a fraction of the planets in this game, man. It's been crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're like, we explored maybe one out of a uh, hundred thousand galaxies or some shit like that. It's yeah, just crazy. So many planets, <clears throat> so many areas. And, you know, I always thought like, oh yeah, like Terraria, it's... Everything is just like Terraria. Mm -hmm. The the gameplay, the the materials, the building, creating, destroying, exploring. The only thing in difference is the the traveling to different planets. Um, you know, Terraria is like one giant map versus uh, Starbound, which is like a, a thousand I don't know planets mm -hmm. out there. And I was thinking, oh yeah, these planets are randomly generated, but you know, when you go down to these planets and explore, it's there's so many different things so many things you expect to see but it's like different <laughs> so but um yeah just playing that and comparing it to raria i don't i think they're just two separate games entirely mm -hmm. and i enjoy it like really crazy like till this day like I, on my back way up to la i was just playing terraria on my laptop <laughs> 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 or not terraria starbound starbound and i was like man this game is amazing because you just discover things build things and you always have some sort of objective to do yeah and that's what like kills your time it's not even the story it's just oh yeah i want to build like a castle in the sky or i want to fish deep down inside the the ocean planet so yeah that game is fun yeah man and of course you <laughs> Have to get different materials to build different things, um, so that's why you'll travel to different planets to see what else they can offer you. Um, there's different kinds of communities too. I think there's five different races in the game. So if you travel to different planets, you'll run into these races and their towns and their cities, and you can just go in and if you like the way their chairs look, you can steal their chairs, put it on your ship, <laughs> make your own house on their planet and put their own stuff in it. But it, it's deep too, is what I'm finding out as well. And this game, after 40 hours, still surprises me, right? Yeah. I mean, I think Rick was the first one to find like a bird temple because there's this race of bird people and they have this temple where they have all their statues and their gods. It's like Egyptian, right? They have all these... Um, like people figures with dog faces and hawk faces like in ancient egypt and all that stuff they have mummies and tombs and coffins and stuff everything's built like a pyramid and they have books too which talk about their religion and what they believe in it's crazy oh, this wow yeah. other race of ape people and they have this poster on all their walls that says the big ape is watching and may the big ape bless you you know it's like their god figure and they have a bible about it which i've read there's Dang. this race of people called the glitch people and they have medieval kind of um, towers and castles that they've built. And we've run to some that were friendly and I've run to some that were hostile. So I'll just go in there and kill everybody. You know, they have swords and shit, not a rocket launcher. <laughs> it's blowing everything up. <laughs> so the game just never fails to surprise me. I think the one of the most pleasant surprises is you can find musical instruments in this game yeah and you get and once you use the musical instruments it'll give you a list of songs that you can play so of course you just choose a song and you play it you can walk down travel playing your song that's not the end though you can type in a name of a band that you want to be in and if someone on your world is in the same band when you play that song and they play their instrument it syncs up and plays Sync. at the same time, dude. <laughs> what? Like rock band. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I think I just found a drum set too. So, of course, the drums is just percussion. So, if you pick a song, it's not going to sound like the melody of the song, right? It's just going to be the percussion. So, I had Rick come over and I asked him to play his guitar while I played my drums. And it matched the song so perfectly, yeah. dude. It was amazing. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I what I like too about the game is, um, you know, I was thinking, okay, this is uh, you're just gonna we're gonna go to different planets and uh, the planets are pretty finite. But then when you like zoom out in the navigation oh, yeah. area, and I'm like, okay, there's a couple stars here, a couple galaxies here, 
And then I'm like dragging, dragging it like to see where the edge of the, the map is. And I cannot stop. It does not <laughs> stop at all for the life of me. And each little scar has like maybe five or six planets. And, you know, these planets have like a lot. This is like Terraria times a billion, basically. Yeah. And then, you know, I was like, okay, maybe me and you can uh, meet up somewhere. And I, I looked it up and I was like, oh, there's coordinates. And then I gave you the coordinates and then gives you the option uh, for your to travel to my ship from wherever part of galaxy you're in <laughs> you can come to my galaxy yep. and then dude you were saying i was literally like across the map and i checked too i like looked up uh brent's coordinates and oh my god we were so star galaxies way <laughs> across from each other <laughs> and i was like originally you know you uh you were asking me you're like okay where are you at like uh, what did, you know? Can you describe the stars? And I was like, okay, yeah, the this one looks like yeah. a yeah. And this one looks like a triangle. This one looks like a a Z. Um, I'm around that, and you're like, yeah, I'm I'm around that too. And um, and then I sent you a picture, and you're like, wait, this does not look like what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that that's pretty cool. It's just like, and then when you travel, it's like you have to do like a warp speed thing, mm -hmm. kind of like a jump speed. So it really feels like No Man's Sky, but at a two-bit level. Yeah. Um, and that's what I enjoy the most is just traveling to different planets, mm. um, sightseeing, and discovering new things with each yeah. other. Yeah, dude, it's huge. I remember that, too, when I typed in your coordinates and I mapped it out. And my map just went zoop, like flew all the way to you. I was like, yeah, there's no way, dude. I would have never found you on my own. <laughs> and that's the crazy thing, too, is there is, I want to say, thousands and thousands of stars that we can travel to. And if you think about it, in each of those stars is, like you said, four or five planets. And on each of those planets is two different communities of races, you know, that you can meet, do missions for, things like that that have their own histories and things like that. And then think yeah. about it even more. That's just on the surface level. You can mine underground and see what's going on underground too. You know, yeah. find these. we found a bunch of abandoned like underground temples and tombs where there's treasure and stuff. This game is crazy, man. I didn't yeah. think I've never really played Minecraft or Terraria like that, but I can see, you know, where the charm is and just the discovery and the vastness yeah. of the world you know? and then on top of that the the ability to affect the world you know you can make your own house your own community you can colonize a planet if you wanted to right now i'm on this oceanic planet that's all ocean and i'm trying to build an underwater world <laughs> You know, like, what's your name? Like Bioshock. Up. Yeah, dude, I'm trying to build an underwater world so I can reach the core and dig under it. It's going to be Japanese themed. Oh, man, it's going to take me a week to build this thing. But it's going to be amazing once I do, man. It's going to be crazy. Make it, uh, make your outside part like glass dome so dude, you can see I know. through. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, man. So you can see all the fish swimming around and shit like that. It's It's just crazy, man. This game is huge. It is. The only thing that is, like, really kind of different from Terraria is you have to eat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do have to eat. And it's pretty consistent, too. That that full meter goes down pretty quickly. Yeah, especially, like, when you're so invested in, like, doing something like building or digging. You're like, oh, crap, I got to eat. And then you're, like, <laughs> realize you're way down below you don't have any somewhere. Food. <laughs> no food, so you have to scavenge. And, you know, I like that that feature. It's like you, you kind of have to survive and think about, like, where you're at, you know, yeah. versus where you dig. And you can dig limitlessly and then just instantly teleport back to mm -hmm. wherever your, your spawn point is. But here you have to, like... Think about, okay, if I go this far, I have to have, like, five pieces of meat before I can <laughs> go that far. And then you have to go all the way back up in order to teleport back to your ship, yeah. which is which is pretty cool. Um, that way, you know, it doesn't feel like you have to just keep digging and then you're like, okay, yeah, I can teleport anytime I want. Um, but yeah, I like that, that feature. You really have to prepare for your mining adventures, man. Exactly. And yeah. you have to cook. You have to cook your food, too. You can't just eat it raw. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> so crazy, man. So this might turn into a Starbound podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what the this, future This is what supposed to be, Destiny is supposed to be like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, No Man's Sky, like you compared it to, was a huge game that had the potential that this game had. I think the scope was just too big for it, right? I yeah. Mean, that's the charm of this is there is those five different races that have deep rooted history. You couldn't really have that in no man's sky. Right. I mean, I'm sure there is um, with all the alien structures that people are discovering, but it's not as quirky as it is with 2d sprites. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Um, and maybe that's what you need to pull it off is just to make the graphics simple. So you can portray the true vastness and deepness of it. Right. Not have it look super pretty in 3d and then, that's it. It's super shallow. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who knows, man? All I know is I'm going to be stuck on this game for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is we can't steal in front of NPCs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember I saw I was in this town and I liked this piano that someone had. So I trapped them downstairs. I like built walls around them so they wouldn't come upstairs. <laughs> and I just stole the piano and then let them free. <laughs> Dang, we are real space pirates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so, yeah, you think you would travel to these planets where there's knights and samurai and ancient Egyptian bird people, and you think you would just own them up with rocket launchers, right? No. They're pretty strong. Yeah. And the strongest weapon I found is a fucking magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally turned my character into a mage, and I'm just shooting magic everywhere at people. I'm raining fire shooting lightning bolts he's a god with opening these portals to have lightning bolts come out of it and i can heal people i'm it's crazy man it's changed my play style where i used to just use a hammer that uh -huh. would just kill everything in one shot nope now i hang in the back and heal my allies <laughs> <Shoot something farther laughs> away. it's crazy man and it's not like there's a specific mage class or tank class or anything like that but it's whatever you make of it and i think that's the huge part of the game it's it's whatever you make of it you know rick and i are not doing the main story we're yeah we're still on level one <laughs> <laughs> well, i think we've been the first two missions and now we're just unleashing havoc on the universe <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened when i did black flag uh, assassin's creed mm -hmm. i was just exploring all of the seas you know destroying everything but then it's like oh yeah i have to story i have to do <laughs> Uh, yeah, the gun I like to use is the the flamethrower, mm -hmm. and but it only you know it's only good with close range kind of thing. But what I do is I like to trap all my enemies in a like a little brick wall or something, build it around them, and then poke a little tiny hole, and then just unleash my flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> but I you know I found out the limitations. It's actually like. You know, like the penguin that was flying the UFO. I cannot use a flamethrower on that thing. Oh, yeah. It'll just <laughs> rain on you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. But good times. Good times for sure. Um, If you guys want an update on Bloodborne, we still haven't beat that boss. I think we've <laughs> made two and effort <laughs> with Starbound. Last week, though, I did go on my own and beat it just to prove a point to myself that I can still do it. <laughs> <laughs> the like, part is I beat it in the first try and sent Rick a video. <laughs> like, dude it's supposed to be easy why are we getting our asses kicked um uh, yeah and then other than that for me i've just been dabbling in san andreas still trying to platinum that game so any free time here and there i i, I jump into that um but yeah it's mainly been starbound right any other games you've been trying out no i haven't been trying games but mainly i just been playing the the mobile game Final Fantasy XVS. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. You it, power it, it up just your kills. people or what? It, it's yeah, kind of like it, it's easy to to power up and level them up. But I just trying to collect that collector in me. I'm just trying to collect all the the <laughs> rare, you know, characters like Cloud, you know, or uh, the new characters um, Noctis from Final Fantasy 15. Mm -hmm. um, but I found one character that I discovered, and his name was Russell. <laughs> <laughs> one of our friends name and i was like he loves to play final fantasy was it a 14 bard? no it was a gladiator oh, oh. yeah well, so first place tank 
<laughs> so I was like, oh, what? He played so much because he plays every day. Like, I think he raids every Saturday or something. And I was like, man, he plays uh so much that he became a Final Fantasy character. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the, pretty much the game. I just have been so invested in Starbound. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, the game is crazy, man. How many hours have you put in Terraria? Um, I think over a hundred hours. Holy um, shit. Yeah, it was mainly because we put everything on the extreme difficulty, mm -hmm. and we it was me and my two nephews, Patrick and Andrew. And what we did was we built a castle in the sky, um, and we just went through like all of the bosses, discovering everything. But it took yeah over a hundred hours to to finally beat that game. Shit. It's about to be us with yeah. Starbound, dude. Exactly. <laughs> like, or, since we see no limit or end to this exploration stuff, it's like, yeah, we're going to spend <laughs> at least 80 hours. Because <laughs> the thing is, dude, you can plant your flag, you know, and teleport yep. to it anywhere. I'm about to have a million flags by the end of this game. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be able to quick teleport to any planet I want. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man. This week, we'll be talking about the future of consoles now this is shortly after the release of the xbox one x and for all accounts and purposes it had a pretty successful launch yeah i think its numbers are higher than any console i think in the past two years or something like that i know it sold more than the switch in this first weekend and it sold more than the playstation 4 pro so wow. that definitely says something about it. Um, I know neither <laughs> of us really picked it up, man. But do you know anybody that has an Xbox One X? <laughs> and that's the thing. No, I don't. You know, like everyone I know has a PlayStation or a PlayStation Pro. Mm -hmm. And even my coworkers, I think he only has an Xbox One, but he's already switching over to the PS4. And I think it's just because where the friends are at, um, they're mainly on the PlayStation side now. And I think that's what makes it worth it, you know? It's just, I don't want to play alone, have an advanced console and play alone. That's what it kind of felt like for the PC for a, for a bit when I built my PC and I had all these awesome games, but no one to really play because they didn't mm -hmm. have the same things. But yeah, the Xbox One X, it looks amazing and I since it's selling pretty good i'm guessing people are going to start to convert or i know our friends are not going to convert anytime soon so mm -hmm. i think the big thing for me is just the backwards compatibility man that's huge i saw someone playing ninja gaiden that was on xbox on twitch oh. the other day and i was tripping <laughs> <laughs> plays sony needs to step their game up and come out with a console like that where you could put in any game from any of their past three great consoles and be able to play it dude ps5 <laughs> <laughs> that being said does xbox one x count is this the new generation of consoles man mm, i think it's like an advanced version of the xbox one of course it is but i meant like it's just the maximize of what it could be uh, versus i think that when it goes to next gen i think it has to be innovative and like i don't know technology disruptive so basically uh -huh. ask the mind blow like vr integrate vr or some sort of thing where it's just like wireless there's no controller and you're just pointing at the screen to play games something like that <laughs> but i think that's where it starts getting um becoming the next generation kind of thing is when you introduce something that is not already being done by right now so like I'd say the switch is definitely taking the taking steps in towards that direction. That's true. But I feel like that's only next gen by Nintendo standards, right? Nintendo's always been Exactly. So that's why it's what they're doing with their consoles. At that level. But what about I don't know, just for the sake of it, PlayStation three and PlayStation Four didn't really have anything too different about them on the surface wise, right? It was just hardware, essentially, yeah? Um, it was the actually the HUD, um, the navigation, the being able to stream things and integrate, watch people's channels, um, even play, take over their their game, you know, mm -hmm. like assist them. 
Oh, yeah, we should do that. You should take over my Bloodborne game, by the way. Dude, the lag on that. <laughs> it's gonna be cool. I remember I tried to play Destiny. You just got to predict the future. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, you know, like how okay. they, and then Twitch, they had to do YouTube, Spotify. Now they're putting, what, TV onto the thing, too? PlayStation um, TV, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean, like, you know, versus, like, the, the shift from PS3 and PS4, like, uh, it was mostly software based, um, but it was like pretty innovative to become the next generation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're just gonna have an advanced PS4, PS, or Xbox One um, as the the next gen. It's just gonna be what uh, upgraded graphics, and, mm -hmm. and that's it. Um, I'd just say it has to be something that like, oh yeah, this is something new to us, mm -hmm. kind of thing. What else could that be besides? exactly VR, I guess. they're running out of ideas <laughs> yeah because i mean they tried that with the connect and i think the connect is officially dead right yeah they sh officially shut that stuff down um but i don't know i i would say it has to lean to either vr ar or something where you know it, it's not your traditional gaming yeah. kind of thing yeah I, I i think i'm with you on the ar stuff that yeah. being said, I think Sony's got the jump on everybody with a PSP. I mean, yeah. I think that if they figured out how to integrate that more into the home consoles, if they figured out a better wireless network, I think that would take off, man. Shoot, sure. if you if your game is actually like on the table, so like you're just looking through a camera, you know, like a PS Vita or something, and you're playing the game like on the counter. Mm -hmm. So you're like you're playing Terraria or Starbound on on I don't know real surfaces like through AR uh, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that would be kind man, of man. That that yeah, that would be. I think it would be challenging, but that would be like pretty in innovative. Yeah, I think that'd be the next thing for sure. That would be the innovation to move on to the next gen. Um, yeah, I think I agree with you that there has to be something that different, right? What it is now though is not coming to mind to me. Besides exactly. VR, dude. <laughs> and even with that, I feel like VR is just a gimmick, right? It is. Nothing. So beats. maybe it has to be like smell a vision okay. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> from Futurama. We gotta smell the games we play. <laughs> and the difference from a PlayStation Five to a PlayStation Five Pro, they're gonna add 500 new smells <laughs> in the PlayStation Five Pro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah because i don't think nothing is gonna beat traditional gaming when you, you just have a controller in your hand right yeah and i mean playstation has messed around with the whole you want to balance on this beam make sure your controller is balanced you know so i don't think that's gonna go anywhere did they do that for warhawk or ace combat as well um, they had some sort of flicking system with the controller, so basically you can fly with it if uh -huh. you turn that thing on, and then if you like flick your controller upwards, uh, it will actually do like a barrel roll. Okay. So they were trying to get it to like you, you're kind of steering the ship, but it felt a little awkward because it's like in third person, so mm -hmm. you can't really, you know, I don't know. It just feels different, but uh, yeah, they were trying to do some sort of innovation with that, especially like with the the move PlayStation Move. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I think all, both companies, both sides, is kind of having a little trouble with VR right now. I think because yeah. you definitely you don't really see that anymore, right? You flick the controller to do this or that. Um, now I know they're two completely different things, but they are just gimmicks of different ways to play games. Exactly. So I think that's why that can be comparable to VR. You know, the whole controller flick can be comparable to VR because it's just a new feature that is, I guess, is kind of cool for a little bit <laughs> that nobody's going <laughs> to use it anymore. Because to this day, I really don't think anything on VR has been groundbreaking. It's all just first person stuff. Um, exactly. I mean, Resident Evil was a huge title. Um, games that go away from that are. I forgot what the game is called for Sony, but it's like you manage your own Jurassic Park and you can just pick stuff up and build a theme park and stuff like that. So now when you kind of play God, you know, maybe that would be it. 
you know, oh, playing God, roller yeah, coaster down. Yeah, roller coaster tycoon is huge. Sim Cities is huge. Those have huge followings. VR versions. Use your uh, yeah. Use your move to pick up the little yeah. characters or stuff like that. Yeah. That'd be pretty sick, actually. Oh, I got it already. EA. See, call me up. <laughs> Sims VR, man. <laughs> call me up, dude. What's up, EA? Yeah. Oh, then you can play Mario top down too. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. Like Rabbids. Yeah. Imagine a yeah. game like Rabbids or XCOM. Oh, dude. I think we figured it out. See? I think we figured out how to save VR. We start the company. The we we company. figured out how to save VR, dude. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, can you imagine Final Fantasy Tactics with VR, dude? Like Jeez. you can rotate it and then you can like zoom in and out, dude. Yeah, maybe have a first person close. mode. Yeah, oh god, that's the dream. I'm down, man. You're crazy. This we got patent this idea. That's the dream, this. dude. <laughs> did you ever? You played Final Fantasy Tactics, right? A uh, little bit. Uh, did you ever get Cloud? Yeah. No, I did not know there's Cloud in there. What, <laughs> dude? You have to do. I gotta start playing this game. So this much... was on the PS3, I think, and the Vita, PSP. No, I mean, well, it came out on. The original PlayStation. I'm sure there's a PlayStation 3 version that you could just download. But you had to go through so many bullshit steps to get Cloud. And by the time you got him, he was way under leveled, dude. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool because he had his own class. Because, you know, you can build classes. There's like mages. You can make a samurai and all this. But he had his own class. It was soldier class, just like Final Fantasy VII. So it was oh. great. <clears throat> but it was another like. I don't know, interdimensional thing, like how Lightning is in Final Fantasy fourteen. You know, she just teleports in. She's like, where the hell yeah. am I? So it's kind of <laughs> like that with Cloud. Um, but yeah, dang, now thinking about that, VR doesn't sound like a bad idea, dude. See, we got to pitch that idea. Whoever's <laughs> listening to the podcast, <laughs> give Brent the credit. <laughs> <laughs> so with next generation consoles with consoles now can graphics get any better dude like how far can graphics carry you you know i mean See, uncharted yeah. and last of us look great at points and that's cool but do we need those to look better is that all that consoles next generations can do for us yeah exactly and then how far you know can it go where it's like the borderline of being a being able to buy a PC. That's you know, true. If the Xbox One released at five hundred dollars. You're already at the bare minimum of getting a a PC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know. It's just like, where are they striving for? Are they just striving for the the graphics? Um, and if that's the new direction of the PS Five and the the Xbox two thousand sixty two, um, <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. Um, I just hope something is going to be a game changer in the future. Yeah. I think they need to put it more towards an entertainment system rather than a game system, which mm. Xbox One tried to do but failed horribly at, right? Yeah. Because they were trying to get people to plug in their cable through there and control their entire entertainment system through their Xbox with the voice commands and stuff. Um, I think they put too much emphasis on that, you know? I think... If you just market your next console as a gaming console that has all these cool features, but really you just put the graphics up a little bit, meanwhile add in all this other stuff. Because I don't know if you browse the web on your console ever, but it's the most Never. horrible thing in the world, dude. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it so if is they add super horrible. Yeah, like a comprehensive web browser or something like that, or. Because I know they already got the streaming and the video players down on lock on consoles. So making it that way. I mean, you're watching TV on your console now, right? Or you tried the free trial and you said it was great. So Yeah, it was yeah. actually pretty cool. But uh, it's like, yeah. I think what would also be very innovative, if we can wear our trophies as titles. <laughs> That's so simple, man. I feel like they could do that now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, graphics-wise, does that even matter anymore? I mean, we're putting in 40 hours in Starbound, and that's just 2D pixel sprites, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it just matters on how fun the game is, right, and the gameplay and all that. I mean, 
of course I'd like to see Red Dead Redemption with super great graphics, but I don't really need that. I think Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to pull that off great, right? Yeah, yeah, it will too. And then is it going to release on PC or is it just going to be on PS4? So far, I think it's just PS4 and Xbox. I don't think it's just console specific or it's not exclusive to PlayStation. Ah, I see. Because Red Dead was on Xbox as well, I want to say. But, yeah, man. Do you think they'll reveal PS5 at PSX this year? Nah. (laughs) I think they're just going to give you the theory of, like, what's going to be on PS5. Um, You know, like, maybe what what they're working on. That would be pretty cool. But uh, I think there might be still in the alpha phase, um, making the tweaks before uh-huh. they can start building it like right now and starting January kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I think they'll do it, dude. I think they're going to drop like it's just going to be a black screen and then the number five is going to pop up and that's going to be the end of the press conference, dude. It's going to be Gran Turismo 5. <laughs> <laughs> they just fucking dropped sport. <laughs> <laughs> Gran Turismo 5 is not actually no the timing would be right they announce it now it doesn't come out for 20 years that's that's how Gran Turismo does <laughs> oh, oh, I, that would be so hilarious they just put 5 and it's like blue and everyone's all cheering and, and going that's crazy it. and, that's and it, then they're yeah. like oh wait it's Gran Turismo 5 oh no <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they're gonna have that 5 come up and not say anything like that's gonna Dude, be that very be very, very bomb. End. they're gonna show like the last trailer they're going to show is Red Dead Redemption 2 and then that ends and then just the blue 5 is going to go on the screen and then black oh. out and they're going to turn on the lights like alright guys we'll see you tomorrow have fun oh. and that's it dude god tier dude that would be pretty epic and then he has to drop the mic too <laughs> <laughs> no not even say anything they won't even say anything there won't be anybody on stage they'll just let it let us saturate it we'll just soak it in and talk about five for the whole night. What could five mean? I don't know, man. <laughs> well, he has to, if he's going to get off stage, he has to like walk backwards and just look at the crowd. <laughs> not not turn his gaze, just walk backwards into the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. So high hopes. High hopes still. And we'll see what the future holds for us, man. I mean, it's so hard to get 60 frames per second on a console. And PCs can pull off 144 if they wanted to, right? So Exactly. I think you brought up a good point at where does it become like, oh, man, I'm spending $600 for a PlayStation 5. I might as well just get a computer. And that's what they have to balance with, you know. That's why game prices haven't risen over 60 bucks, right? Because if you try to do that, no one's going to buy your game anymore. So I think they exactly. found a sweet spot, 400 500 bucks for next-gen consoles. So we'll see how it goes, man. The future is crazy. 11 days from now. <laughs> <laughs> For real, though, Final Fantasy Tactics VR would be amazing. Let's do it, guys. Shoot, yeah. Let's do it. That would be. <laughs> but, yeah, man, now we're at the part of the show where we recommend games for you guys. What's your uh, game recommendation this week? Um, Currently, there's a – it was one of these old games I used to play, and I think I mentioned it before, but it was uh, Silkworm. Mm. And it's on the NES. Um, it was my favorite game. I think it's my favorite game of all time for NES. Oh, shit. But um, like I said, I, back in the day, we used to play my cousin. I think I even had a dream of my cousin. Maybe that's why I'm recommending this game. <laughs> we're playing <laughs> the game. I had a dream that we were playing games together. Uh-huh. And then we like grew old and we're like, stop playing games. So it was kind of <laughs> a sad dream. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, we were playing this game on Silkworm. Um and you're basically first player first player is a helicopter and the second player is a jeep and you go through the level it's a side scrolling kind of game and you uh, fight entire armies um all types <coughs> and then you get these power-ups and they add like additional guns to whatever vehicle you're driving mm-hmm. and i remember we would play every day at like 5 30 in the morning um get to like almost the eighth level i think there's only like nine or ten levels and then we would die and then we would cry for a little bit and then try the next day you know <laughs> and then i remember we were so young we would never beat the game 
and until we had to grow up to like we were in like i was like maybe 18 19 or something like that it was years later Mm -hmm. and that's where we were able to sit down and finally go through the game and beat the game to the part to the point where like we were all sweaty we're just like man this was so intense (laughs) this game so basically it's like contra but you're you're a vehicle and you know and the bosses too they're like uh different types of heavy futuristic vehicles like uh like a giant tank that kind of can fly um dang man maybe we should uh look into these kind of vehicles but (laughs) (laughs) some that shoot like laser cannons and then the laser drops bombs um so silkworm is pretty awesome it's it's a very two player focused game and i definitely recommend this game all time if you have the nes and if you can get it on the the classic remastered nes (laughs) and i know those people that like to um get those games for free (laughs) (laughs) not to say any names (laughs) but yeah definitely worth checking out nice dude Uh, if you could do online co-op with that game dude that'd be crazy huh oh yeah that would be way too crazy (laughs) so (laughs) as if we talked about it enough i will recommend starbound definitely pick it up while the getting is good we are really (laughs) on this game i think this four-day weekend went by super fast just because i was playing starbound the entire weekend um (laughs) it's 15 bucks on steam right now space exploration build your own ship build your own colonies possibilities are endless and you could join our band i have extra instruments i can give to you (laughs) 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 but yeah um next week We'll be talking about video game mysteries and myths from Mount Chiliad to that magic glass chest in Vault of Glass. Ooh. There are myths in video games that are yet to be solved, and we'll, we'll talk about a little bit of those. But before then, Rick, some words of wisdom? If you're going to go to family parties, make sure you get leftovers. <laughs> <laughs>